Partnership Tax General Concepts Problem 7. Jalapeno Corporation and Habanero Corporation formed a partnership to construct a restaurant. Jalapeno Corporation contributed $525,000 cash and Habanero contributed land with a fair market value of $525,000 and a basis of $455,000 in exchange for a 50% interest in Pepper Partnership. Immediately after its formation, Pepper Partnership borrowed $262,500 from a local bank. This debt is recourse and it's unsecured by any specific partnership asset. Compute each partner's initial basis and its partnership interest, assuming both partners are general partners, and compute each partner's initial basis and its partnership interest, assuming Jalapeno is a general partner and Habanero is a limited partner. This problem deals with liabilities, partnership tax and liabilities. Liabilities make tax, the tax world very, very challenging. Now, I've got a lot of videos that focus on liabilities, the effects when partnership versus S-corporation, loans, all sorts of things. But when you have liabilities in the mix, it really does make things a lot more challenging. The good news is that I can really summarize and help you understand this, make it very simple. So let's go ahead and start. What we're doing here is we're basically assuming two different independent alternatives. The first alternative, we'll call that alternative one, is let's assume that both partners are general partners. Okay. Now, what's going on here? They're forming a partnership. We've got Jalapeno, Habanero. They're forming a partnership. Jalapeno contributes cash, $525,000. Habanero contributes land with a basis of $455,000. Now, when on contribution, there's no consequences to the parties if property is being transferred, which basically property is everything. It's so broad except services, which we don't have services here. Okay. The idea of services, by the way, is let's say you have someone with a lot, a lot of money and you've got somebody, like let's say you want to start a pizza business, you've got a lot of money, but you don't know how to make pizza and you you basically go into business with a pizza chef that basically doesn't bring any money, but they bring years of service and years of, uh, and they're going to provide service for the business. That's the idea is that that would be a service partner, the pizza um, chef, okay? So in these situations, with, with liabilities, it does make things a lot more difficult. Now they're each gonna get a 50% interest, that's important. And the reason why is because generally speaking, when it comes to the allocation of liabilities, unless the partners have, you know, you have, you have, if you have differences in general partner versus limited partner, then the idea is you focus on the profit loss ratio for different types of liabilities. Now we have what's called recourse and non-recourse liabilities. A recourse liability, the best way to think of a recourse liability is kind of like the idea of when you learn about the different types of, um, different types of entities where you have sole proprietorships, partnerships, general partnerships, limited partnerships, and you learn that like corporations, LLCs, limited partnerships, they have limited liability. And then a general partnership and sole proprietorship has unlimited liability where the creditors can go after the personal assets of the owners. That's kind of the same thing of a recourse liability. Recourse means that the partnership or any of the partners or specific partners basically are subject to Creditors going after unlimited per, their personal assets to basically fulfill the liability if, in case the partnership did not pay it off, that basically defaults on it. But if it's non-recourse, then nobody has, um, then the partnership, neither the partnership nor any of the partners can any, can the creditor go after anybody. And that's why with a, a non-recourse loan, you normally see a non-recourse loan be secured. So this one's recourse and it's unsecured by any property. So the idea is with non-recourse liabilities, usually there's lots of property or a piece of property the business owns that secure it. So that way, if the business was to stop paying the liability in default, the creditors can go and they basically see as the property. Okay. So we've got $262,500 of liabilities in this problem. All right. And the question's asking, what are the, their initial bases on formation? This all happens at the same time. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do for both of these situations, okay? So we have situation one and situation two. And really the key question in this question, in this problem and distinguishing situation one and two is how do we divvy up or how do we break up that $262,500 of recourse liability, okay? That, that's the amount of liabilities. There's only two partners, Jalapeno, I'll put J and H for Habanero. The liability amount is that amount. How do we break it up? Which person is responsible for what? Now, in the partnership world, and this is something that's different from S-corporations, and I talk about this in other videos, you basically get 
to put the portion of liabilities that you're that you're responsible for in your basis. You don't get to do that for S corporations or C corporations. And the reason why is because a corporation is a separate legal entity for legal purposes, as many of you have learned before in other classes. Okay. So the question here is going to be, how do we break up the um, $262,500 between jalapeno and habanero? Okay. And I mentioned again, the interest, the percentage interest is very important unless there's some distinguishing factor, like there's a limited partner and general partner, stuff like that. So in the first situation, they are both general partners. So Jalapeno is a general partner and Habanero is a general partner. Now, in the case where we have both of them are general partners, we rely on the, um, the loss ratio. We focus on the loss ratio. If I tell you they're 50-50 partners for everything, that means that it's 50% for profit, 50% for loss, 50% for capital. And you see that because they both give $525,000 worth of stuff. $525,000 of cash and $525,000 worth of fair market value. Okay. So how do we break up this $262,000, $262,500 liability amount in scenario one where they're both general partners? We use the loss ratio. We focus on loss ratio. And for that, it's 50%. So we basically split that number up between the two. So that means it's going to be half of 262,500, which means that jalapeno is responsible for 131,250 and habanero is responsible for $131,250. Okay. Now, what if we change the situation and we go to number two? We're not done by, by the way, answering number one. I'm just trying to show you what the main part of the question is. Then we'll finally come back and we'll figure out the basis the basis in both of these situations. Because that's what's asking. It's saying compute each partner's initial basis given the above information and assume they're both general partners and then also assume that Jalapeno in situation two is a general partner and Habanero is a limited partner. So in the second situation, Habanero is a limited partner. If you're a limited partner, that means that you are not responsible or the, the creditors or anybody cannot go after you for personal assets. But Hob I'm sorry, but Jalapeno as a general partner, they can. So in cases where you have a general partner and limited partner and you've got a liability, you don't know you no longer worry about that profit loss ratio. You focus on the fact that okay, the general partner is now going to be more at risk. Because that's the key, that's the operative language here by the way, at risk. Who has more economic risk here? So Jalapeno, think about it. If the business let's say doesn't do well, and the business has no money to pay off the liability. And let's say that um, the business has run and basically used up and depleted all the assets, the cash and the land, but the, but the liability still is, is owed. So everything else is at zero. There's nothing left to pay. Well, if Habanero's portion that Habanero contributed has already been used up and then a creditor comes after Habanero, guess what? There's nothing that they can get from Habanero because again, Habanero is a limited partner. But Jalapeno as a general partner, they can go after Jalapeno's personal assets. So in this case, all $262,500 of the liability goes to Jalapeno and none of it goes to Habanero. Now, some of you are thinking, well, yeah, but that's like in a hypothetical situation. Well, that's how we do recourse liabilities. We allocate them assuming that everything is worth zero. It's kind of a ridiculous assumption, but it's basically in the worst case scenario. What would happen if the land and the cash both went to zero is basically the idea. Well, then Habanero would be responsible for paying the liability. Jalapeno would out of pocket. So that's how we allocate those amounts. Okay, that's how we allocate those amounts. But we're not done. We're, we're done with the hard part, allocating the liability. So in scenario one, we split the liability between the two. 131,250, 131,250. In scenario two, we give it all to the general partner, Jalapeno. Because remember, Jalapeno is a general partner. Okay. The question though in both asks, what is the initial basis for both shareholders? So in number one, scenario one, we start with the basis by bringing over the assets. So I'll do two columns, jalapeno and habanero. So their basis on from the contributed property, their basis from the contributed property is going to be, you look at the basis of the items they contributed. That's the rule. Okay, there's another problem I go through on formation of partnerships, and it's very similar to this and talks about this concept. On formation, remember, no gain or loss or no consequences. Talked about that in our problem. I mentioned it earlier. The, you use the basis of the asset that's contributed. Well, Jalapeno contributes cash, and cash, the basis always equals the face amount. 
So we put $525,000 for Habanero. I'm sorry, for, my apologies. We put $525,000 for Jalapeno. I confused the two, sorry. $525,000 for Jalapeno. And then for Habanero, Habanero contributes land, fair market value $525,000, but it has a $455,000 basis. We care about the basis number. That's what carries over. So we do $455,000 for Habanero starting. In scenario one, we also get to add the liabilities allocated or responsible for. And that's what we did over on the right side here. So remember in scenario one, they both have 131,250, 131,250, and that gives us the ending number for number one. That gives us our ending number. So in number one, the ending number is going to be 656,250 for jalapeno and 586,000 Sorry, let me rewrite that. Make it clear. 586,250 for habanero. Now we're not done because we have scenario two. So for scenario two, let me actually do this one over here on the right side. I've got a little bit more room. We're going to take the same starting point. So this is number two over here. We're going to have jalapeno and habanero. We're going to start with the same basis contributed, which is the same numbers. Same exact application. So jalapeno contributes $525,000 a basis. Habanero contributes $455,000 a basis. And by the way, the reason we use a basis, not fair market value, is because, again, we have that, non, um, that no, no tax consequence by doing this, this contribution. So we roll over that tax basis number. We don't use the fair market value. We use the basis. We add to that the liabilities allocated above under scenario two, and that's going to be all 262,500 gets allocated to jalapeno and nothing gets allocated to habanero. And that gives us our ending numbers. So for jalapeno, it's going to be $787,500. And then of course, habanero is just going to be $455,000. And the bottom lines are the correct answers for jalapeno and habanero. So in the first situation, those are the 656,250 and 586,250 are the answers. That's the ending basis. After this, you put all these together. And then scenario two, jalapeno has a basis of 787,500 and um, habanero has 455,000. Sorry, if I said that wrong. Jalapeno, 787,500, habanero, $455,000. And we are done with this one.